Are you looking for the best pinpointer for metal detecting? Then look no further than this video. Today we are going to be unboxing and showing you the Fisher F-Pulse pinpointer and then comparing it to the MineLab ProFind 35 and the Nocta pointer, showing you those pointers as well. But we're going to be showing you these three ah, pinpointers in this video, the sort of depth they have and what you can expect. And we can conclude what pinpointer is the best. We'll get into it. <laughs> Right, so I'm down in Dredge NZ, which is the gold mining equipment shop here in New Zealand. Any gold prospecting stuff you need at all here in New Zealand, make sure to come check them out. They've got both an online short store and a physical store here in Flaxton. Awesome service here, and you can get anything you could possibly need from sluices to pans to dredges. But in the meantime, I've just picked up my second F-Pulse pinpointer. Now, I've had one of these for about a year now. I picked it up maybe closer to two, and it has been an absolute beast of a pinpointer for me. Done the job perfectly. Um, but sadly, my dad has went, nothing to do with the pinpointer, but my dad has just went and lost ours. So I've picked up a second one here. So I'm going to be unboxing this, going through it all, reviewing it, and we're going to compare it against two main top-end pinpointer competitors, the MineLab ProFind 35 and the Nocta Pointer. So, let's open this up. So the F-Pulse pretty much, this pinpointer, it uses pulse induction technology, which is a really unique thing, not really used in other pinpointers, and it hasn't been used successfully before, but on this pinpointer it works really well, and it essentially makes it so dirt has no effect, no matter how heavy, how mineralized the ground is, it'll still get just as deep. So as you can see, 360 tip detection, it's got a ruler on the side, LED light, not really useful the lights on any of the pinpointers to be honest. You've got power and programming and nice really solid body. This is all corrosion proof material and it's not going to corrode or break. You could even use this for digging and you'd be totally fine. It's waterproof up to 6 feet, vibrates and has a lost mode. You have the back which you put batteries in, it just takes 2 AA batteries. Last for ages, 2 AA batteries would probably last at 25 hours. But we'll open this up. So I've got it all open. In here pretty much what you get is it's called a pinpointer holder to stick on your belt. That's a great little addition. Of course the pinpointer itself, perfect size, nice end, grip like that, really solid. And of course the manual telling you what to do. I already know this so we don't need to read through that for now. But in the meantime, I'll open that up, put the batteries in. This back bit here, you just stick a coin in there and just spin it off and chuck your batteries in. So I've just realized this is actually new and improved version. They've updated a little bit. So some changes to it, some upgrades, so it's more smooth pinpointer, which is even better. I don't think it'd get much better. So to turn it on, you press the button and you've got the pinpointer on. Beep indicates it's ready to detect. So to ground balance, you don't normally need to do this unless it's on high sensitivity and very high mineralization. Because of the pulse induction, it has almost no trouble with the ground. But to ground balance, you pretty much put it on the ground, click the button once, that'll cancel out any noise. To adjust sensitivity, that was my ring there, see? My ring all the way up from up here, it's detecting it. To adjust sensitivity, you hold. Do you hear that button? And it has vibrate one, vibrate two, and vibrate three, and sound and vibrate one, sound and vibrate two, and sound and vibrate three. The old version had just sound as well, but who's gonna really use that? Then to confirm the setting, you just hold, turn it off, and then turn it back on and it's in its new setting. So you're all good to go. So we're gonna go test this against some other pinpointers and see how it does. I know from videos online, it just absolutely destroys. Um, we're gonna be comparing it against the ProFind 35. I'll just turn this off real quick. So we'll go have a look. Comparing it against the ProFind 35 and the Nocta Pointer, two of the best competitors available. I know in America, a really popular pointer is the Garrett Pro Pointer, but from every video I've seen, this blows the Garrett Pro Pointer out of the water as well. In fact, I originally came into Dredge and Z here a year and a half ago, and I was gonna get the ProFind 35, I was sure of it. I was like, it's a mine lab pointer, trusted brand, will do the job. Came out with this and so happy to do so. Dan showed me all the, um, Dan from Dredge and Z showed me all the ups of this, and it is such a good pointer. 
So I've got our two competitors, the Nocta Pointer and the Profine 35, and we're gonna be comparing them. So I've got the Fisher here, we have three targets, one penny, one cent in the silver ring. So we're gonna test how far it goes. All, all powered on, ready to detect. So we'll first try the penny. So right about, so right about there. That's the penny. I'll get proper markings in in a minute. We'll try the one cent. What about that line there? Okay, and our silver ring. Oh, far out, that was far. Silver ring right about spot on that line there. All right, we'll mark these up properly and we'll get back to it. So now we have the Nocta pointer all ready to go, starting from the exact same point of the paper and at max sensitivity. We'll just straighten that up a bit. Awesome. Already, the Nocta pointer cannot even get as far as the F-Pulse did on the one cent. it starts making noise about this point here and it gets consistent at about that line so we'll go about here it even made bleeps as far back as about here but they were so faint maybe it's because the pinwheel is on an ever so slight angle but realistically you're going to consistently know it's a target about here now we'll try our silk our one penny or what, not one penny, one cent. That's where it's consistent, about there. So we'll say it's about there. I'm not really sure how the Nocta Pointer works, but I know it's on max sensitivity and all balanced. So the one cent is out there. That's where it made the first sound, and it was got consistent just past that. Right, once again, I'll fix these markings up in a minute. And then finally, we have the silver rug. But it seems to be roughly consistent about that. Oops. About there. So we'll fix those up and get back to you. We now have the mine lab. Let's see how this one does. It's got a far time to beat. The knock like don't get me wrong, that's exceptionally good depth. Like even that, if you think about it, is really good. It just doesn't even come close to the F pulse. It's so good because even though, let's have a look. Even though it picks it up from so long, you might go, hey, it's too sensitive. But, as you can see, it gets consistently louder as you get closer. So if we go, we'll do a more accurate one. Here. Pick up the penny like that. That far, that's so deep. Imagine it picking that up from the surface. So you know it's within a reasonable depth from the surface. And that consistently gets louder, see? So it just gives you such a long range. You can know how deep it is, how far. It's really shallow. Closer, closer. See, even though I can pick it up from that far, it doesn't go full depth to there. I think they've upgraded it, because sure, the upgraded version must have even more sensitivity again. The other one was great, already blew the others out of the water, but this is far out. It's a lot of depth. But anyway, the mine lab. Let's give it a shot. That's where you get the... It's about that line there. That's where you get those faint on and off dings. It's a 
the mine lab, 1p. Silver rain. Now finally, one penny, or one cent. These one cents you once they pick up on the target, it's good, but when it's faint, they often won't. I think it's auto ground balance or something. But it seems to be about the same as the silver ring. So we'll write those on and we'll get the final results. Okay, so it's a few weeks later and I've been able to try out the new F-Pulse a lot more. So we've got our measurements here and the F-Pulse gets the 1C it's at 8.5 centimetres on the max sensitivity air test and the 1 penny at 11.3 centimetres. That's absolutely legendary. In comparison, the Mine Lab got the 1C at 3.75 and the 1 penny at 5.6 and the Nocta got the 1 penny at 4.5 and 3 centimetres. Now I have tried out the F-Pulse, uh, the new version of course, a bit more and I'm gonna go, it has so much sensitivity and such a great pinpointer. I will go over some cons though. Con one, it's expensive. It costs not twice, but about 70% more than the Nocta pointer and about 25% more than the ProFind 35. So it's a bit more pricey. Another con is interference. So currently I'm using the Equinox 800 detector for all my park hunts. However, you can change the sensitivity on the two, but nevertheless, when the Equinox coil is, I'm not sure if this will be the case in all detectors, but when the coil's within about a meter of the pinpointer, it interferes with it a lot, which is not the best, so you do need to move the coil a bit away. And the third and final downside is the pinpoint has this cool function where if the soil's faulting it a lot, or it's faulting because of interference, I think it's interference so much, not necessarily the soil, it will automatically decrease the sensitivity, um, not to decrease at levels, it'll just won't detect as fast, so it'll stop itself from falsing essentially. But at times, it, this can be a little bit annoying. Um, it's a good feature, it's good to have, but often there is a bit of interference, so you're not necessarily going to get this full depth in the field. However, 90% of the time, it gets a somewhat similar depth to this. I personally prefer to run it on two sensitivity rather than three, which decreases those down by about probably half a centimetre, a centimetre, I'd say, yeah, it decreases them down by about a centimetre depth for each of your targets, but you get way less issues with any falsing or any interference, and you can bring the detector a lot closer as well. Um, but overall, with those few small downsides, I don't think it's really any worse than any other pinpointer anyway, it, but yeah, if the coil's near it, it can occasionally false a bit, um, and you do often have the interference outside, so it runs on a slightly lower sensitivity. But normally that is not too much of an issue, and it works perfectly. I've been using it all out for the past few weeks, probably went through two battery lives on it. I've been digging everything, no issues at all. The only issue I've had is the speaker, I was doing mud and water, the speaker got clogged up with mud, so it was really quiet, but I just cleaned that out and it was all good to go. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome pinpointer. I reckon by far the best you can get. Um, however, you definitely, you can't go wrong with the other pinpointers. So like that is still three centimeters. It's still a lot of depth. There's still plenty of other good pinpointers out here, but I just made the video to show if you have the money to invest in the F-Pulse or want to upgrade your pinpointer, it is by far the best you can do, in my opinion. And the depth definitely reflects that. But thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I just want to end it by giving a huge thank you to all our channel patrons, and an extra thanks to HBJNL for all of their support. But outside of that, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see a video where I get some awesome finds, metal detecting in the center of Christchurch, actually using this pinpointer too, the video is up on the screen now. But outside of that, we'll see you on the next one.